Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here tonight. So excited about talking about the wilderness. And uh, first, I'm going to pray. Father, I just want to thank you so much for just everything that you do in my life. I just pray that the words that come out of my mouth are only yours and that people will be truly blessed from your word and your word only. I love you. Amen. Amen. Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. How are you doing tonight? I'm okay. I can't see any of you. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, can I? Right. Do you mind? Yeah. I'm going to skedaddle on over yeah, here a little bit. Okay. There you go. I brought a chair because sometimes my knee likes to mess with me. All right. Wow, you guys all look good out there tonight. I can see you enough. All right. So, wow, what a message, the wilderness. So, that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. So first of all, I want to ask this question. What is the wilderness? Okay. So in the Bible, it means a desolate or an uncultivated place. Right? Desolate is a state of emptiness. And uncultivated means not having been tilled, prepared, or planted. So the wilderness can seem like a place where we don't want to go or a place that we don't belong. It kind of sounds like an empty place where we really don't belong, right? Well, I also read that the wilderness is portrayed as a state of chaos. Okay? However, the wilderness can be a really good place too, right? It's a place where God can separate us from all the influences of the world, right? As well as all the things and the people that we learn to depend on so that we can learn to, to depend on him only. But God is faithful. God will be faithful through every wilderness we're in. In 2 Thessalonians 3.3, it tells us the Lord is faithful, and he will protect you from the evil one. And as I was looking through more scripture, it also says in 1 Corinthians 1.9, God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So if you were here a couple Thursdays, Thursdays ago when Rosemary talked... Right, she was talking about Elijah was fleeing from Jezebel because Jezebel was trying to kill him. And uh, he was running and he was asking the Lord to kill him, right? He's like, just, just kill me. So then he went and he fell asleep under this broom tree. And then this angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. So think about it. Okay, so he's in the wilderness, right? There's nothing and no one around at all. Then he looks over, and there's some cakes and some water, <laughs> right? Do you remember the story? <laughs> well, that was God protecting him in the wilderness. So if you want to read 1 Kings chapter 19 for yourself, you can learn how God protects and provides. You know, so when we listen to God, we can... Learn to hear that still, small voice from the Lord. So the wilderness can be a place where we go to it, or it can be a place where we're taken by the Lord. So here's another question, okay? So how do we get to the wilderness? What takes us there? So what about loneliness? Bitterness, sadness, hopelessness. Here's a big one. Unforgiveness. All the nesses, right? <laughs> All the nesses, right? <laughs> so
So when I think about addiction, I think about drugs or the alcohol or the food or the porn as being the symptom. These are the things that we do or the actions that we take to cover up all these deeper issues that we have. The real roots comes from resentments, the control issues, low self-esteem, the fear and the anger that we've stuffed and we've hidden, mostly because of the guilt and shame that we are, because of our actions and our behaviors when we were loaded, right? Can anyone relate? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about being in the wilderness and my addiction. Okay. <laughs> this was the wilderness of chaos. I'm going to tell you. This is where I was stuck in all my own junk. This is the kind of wilderness that we go to on our own. My bad choices and decisions. My bad behaviors got me there. My clinging on to bitterness, selfishness, resentment, rebellion, and unforgiveness. Those were the things that kept me there. I walked in and out of the wilderness of addiction for 30 years. I would go there. I'd be stuck. Then God would get a hold of me. I'd get all cleaned up for a while. Then my self-centeredness and all the other nesses <laughs> would send me right back to that desolate wilderness. I literally did this for 30 years. <laughs> well, today I'm proud to say I'm 14 years off methamphetamine. Yeah. Um, I am. So I was living and acting like the Israelites when they spent 40 years in the wilderness, right? Because of their fear and their disobedience, and mostly because of their complaining, their straight up unwillingness to trust God, right? Yeah. So God had just taken them through 10 plagues. God had just parted the Red Sea to save them from the Egyptians. God supplied them manna, food from heaven, for 40 years. Guess what? Their shoes never wore out. Not at all. <laughs> right? But their complaining and their grumbling kept them in their wilderness. Talk about four lefts make a circle. Right? You ever see it? Vroom, vroom. You know, just like stuck in that wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> so I really hope you pick up your Bibles and open up to the Old Testament in Exodus 16 through 18. And you can learn for yourself about the Israelites' wilderness. It's... It's a great story. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so I got another question for you. So what happens when we get to the wilderness? What happens while we're there? Okay. So right after Jesus was baptized by John in Matthew 3, he was filled with the Spirit. Jesus also went into the wilderness. In Matthew 4, 1, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Sometimes we need to be led by the Spirit into the wilderness so God can get a hold of us. This is different from the one that we go to and we choose to stay stuck, right? The one where we can't hear anyone or anything. The one I just talked about, the wilderness with all the messes, right? Bitterness, selfishness, unforgiveness. Anyhow, I want to share a different wilderness I was in about a year and a half ago. This one was a wilderness in my recovery. I was bitter. I was angry. I was trying to control the situation with my mom and my brother's addiction that I had no control over. In this wilderness, I was also tempted by the devil. The devil had me riddled with anger. 
I woke up angry. I told every single person that I saw every single day over and over about the situation with my mom and my brother. I was so consumed, just riddled. You know, the truth is, is that what was happening, it wasn't okay at all. But here I was thinking that I had some sort of control over my brother's actions. And the devil kept me stuck in my head, in my unforgiveness. All that was in my recovery. Well, I thank the Lord because he knew what wilderness I needed in my life at that time. I'm so blessed to have this church, this family, all the women in my life that I have today. You know who you are. I remember last year I was leading probably my 13th annual spiritual 12-step group, right? With some of the most important women in my life. And I just finished the spirit, soul, and body uh, study with some really amazing people. And that study, that study changed my life. That's a wonderful study. So right about that time, the spirit led me into the wilderness. Not to be tempted, but to be pruned. So in John 15, 1 and 2, Jesus tells us, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So the Holy Spirit really got a hold of me. The Spirit knew that I was obviously not able to produce any fruit in my life because of the condition of my heart at that time, because of the wilderness that I got stuck in. But something happened to me. Something changed in me. I remember just crying out to Jesus and surrendering to him. I asked him, help me with my unforgiveness. I believe it was that, that very moment. Yeah, it was that very moment that my heart and my mind and my thoughts were being pruned, <laughs> right? The gardener had shown up. <laughs> the gardener had shown up, yes, sir. right? I so I love what Matthew said last week, if you guys were here last week, from John 14, 26, you know, that the Holy Spirit is our comforter and how important it is to have a relationship with the spirit. Matthew stated a quote that was so good last Thursday. It was good. He said, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are now spiritual beings having a human experience. You know? So when we're filled with the spirit, we can hear and see things so differently, right? This is when we can be in the middle of our wilderness and God, our father, the gardener, right? He shows up. He prunes us. He takes off all of our dead branches. You know, all the messes in our life? He does. He takes them all away. Our weakness and our sickness, and our helplessness, and our unfaithfulness. And you remember the big one, the unforgiveness. That's right. So that made me think of Galatians 2.20, where it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by faith 
in the Son of Man who loved me and gave himself for me. Has anyone been blessed from this wilderness series so far? Yes. Have you guys all been, seen Matthew and seen Rosemary? It's been, it's been so good. I, I've been just truly blessed because of it. This message might not be real long, but so finally I have one more question about the wilderness. How do we get out? How do we get out? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. So whether you end up in a desolate, uncultivated wilderness that you brought yourself into and you find yourself stuck in and all alone with no hope in sight and you simply just don't know how to get out, call on Jesus. Or if you're led by the Spirit into a wilderness where you just need all your distractions removed, where you need things to be simple and quiet and a place to be still, call on Jesus. I have his phone number right here. <laughs> right here. See this? This is his phone number. This is it. Amen. So the last scripture here, Romans 10.13. What does it say? That's right. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's right. So this one is a little short and sweet, but I'm going to leave you with this. Our loving Father is always with us. Right? He saves us. He prunes us, and he walks us through every wilderness we're in. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He is our personal gardener. That's it. Let's pray.